Sorry for all the folks who keep getting the notification that we're starting a live. Um, Instagram is being tricky. That's okay. We're persistent. We're activists. Uh, okay. We're... Yay! Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. This is a testament to the persistence of the people who work at Balance. We <laughs> don't take no for an answer. That's right. <laughs> Yay. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad that it worked out. And I'm so glad to see your face. Yeah, you too. Awesome. Exciting to be here. I'm excited to talk about all the amazing work that Balance mm -hmm. is doing, specifically in Massachusetts. Yes. Uh, this is the first time on any sort of Balance platform that we're specifically talking about the policy work that we started, I want to say almost two years ago, but it's really taken off this past year, if you can, if you can believe it. Although 2020 was kind of like a, a time time work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's any any proof that time is elastic. It is how slow and quickly 2020 went. But, yeah, but we're here and we're going to talk about the Massachusetts Healthy School Lunch Bill that mm -hmm. really is a product of all of your hard work. Oh, stop. You've helped. You've been an amazing expert on it and driven so much of it. Oh. But thank you. I'm, I'm really excited we were able to work together on it and yeah. We're really just getting to the start line. We are. We are. So I would love if you could introduce yourself, tell sure. us a little bit about what you do, and even the origin story of the Massachusetts bill. Sure. So a little bit about me. I have um, been very interested in food and food policy for over 20 years now, um, and do that work in my professional life. I run a company called Lighter, where we do healthy um, school or menus and meal planning for families all over the world actually were used in 130 countries mm. and um i was invited to join the balance board by dr gregor uh at the be at the very beginning of this incredible organization um and the origin story for the policy goes something like this uh i was pregnant I was just finished with my first trimester. At that time, you very much care about all of the food that you're putting in your body. And uh, I was standing in my kitchen, looked across to the refrigerator where the school lunch <laughs> menu for my stepdaughters um, was hanging on the refrigerator, picked it up. And I've always, obviously I was on the board of balance. Like I care sure. about school lunch and those issues, but it really hit home that my daughter would be sitting in a cafeteria with kids eating, for example, nachos and cheese, which was what they offered for the second day of school lunch this year, um, chicken and waffles, pepperoni pizza. It just made it, you know, all kinds of um, horrible <laughs> foods for children. Yeah. And, you know, that I, I fully recognize that while this has always been an important part of my life in terms of trying to make the world better, I was going to be faced with my daughter um, mm -hmm. asking me potentially, why can't I eat pepperoni pizza with my friends? Or why is it not okay for me to get nachos and cheese for my school lunch? And I happened to have a relationship with our state senator, mm. who was the champion of the farm animal confinement bill, which I worked very hard on um, many years ago. And he now happens to be the chair of our education committee. And I essentially reached out to his office. Audrey and her team did an incredible amount of hard work to pull together great materials for the meeting. And we were able to persuade him that now is the time to do something about school lunch in Massachusetts yep. and really shift the menu from something that is focused almost primarily on unhealthy animal based foods to something that's a lot more balanced. Yeah, yeah. It's so interesting. I know you and I have talked about this before and people who follow balance know this as well. The the origin my origin story with balance also starts with my child mm. where um very similarly I you know I had worked in public schools. I had seen school lunch and this this is probably not the the best thing to admit but I had seen it and been like yeah that just is what it is and then I had my own child and I was like this can't be what it is <laughs> yeah. it has to be better than this um and yeah it really sort of op like the expansiveness of 
of empathy and urgency you you like experience when you have a child is very real. Yep. And I think speaking to, you know, you looking across the the kitchen and seeing the menu, one of the things that we've been able to do is pull real menus from real. schools in Massachusetts, do nutritional analysis on the items, demonstrate how a large majority of them are actually less healthy than a six piece chicken nugget happy meal and present that to, to policymakers and say, these standards aren't high enough, but schools are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. We are in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. What can we do to, to make this one easy on schools, but also demand change pretty quickly. And I think that's how we got to the, the heart of, of the bill. Do you want to talk a little bit about how sure. it's different than other nutrition policy yeah. bills? Yeah, so I think what's really exciting about this bill, and we'll give COVID some credit for um, driving us in this direction. When we originally drafted the language, we were focused on um, getting the schools and, and um, the regulatory agencies to promulgate regulations, which is what mm -hmm. most school lunch legislation does. But when we were faced with meeting superintendents who were drowning in issues related to COVID, yeah. We realized that it actually is unfair to put so much burden on um, our Department of Education or the individual schools. There are food service companies that are making a profit from selling horrible food to school children in Massachusetts. And so what this legislation now does is it essentially says if you are a company that is selling food to school children in the Commonwealth, you've got to meet these basic nutrition standards. And that has been very well received um, by policymakers. They appreciate us taking the burden off of the schools. They see the role that food service companies have. There is a 100% opportunity for this to not cost the state any more money because it is, oh, it is, you can innovate on what you're serving the kids, keep it in the same price point and make it exponentially healthier. Uh, and so we're really excited about the reception that we've gotten from legislators. Almost everyone that we've talked to has gone on to co-sponsor the bill. We have incredible experts throughout Massachusetts. Yes. And we're very lucky because these experts are often nationally or internationally known for their research on nutrition. But some of them have, actually have children in the school system. So they are constituents with real skin in the game. Um, who also are, are incredible experts in this space. And we're very excited um, to bring this innovative legislation to Massachusetts um, because of Balanced. Yeah, so to, to Massachusetts and then beyond. That's Definitely the goal. Definitely beyond. <laughs> yeah, and, and in fact, it may be that we um, get a, a, um, some, some work under our belt and some experience under our belt with this legislation and know mm -hmm. enough to start working with people in other states. So if you live in New Hampshire, for example, hi, Brian, uh, <laughs> and you want to bring legislation like this to your, uh, to your state, um, definitely start to get involved in balance, like sign up for the email list, start to get to know Audrey. Um, and I'm happy to advise because we do want this to be something that spreads um, throughout the country. We think this yep. is a real uh, great time to um, to work on this issue. The um, And Audrey knows a lot more about this than I do, but there has been a lot of work that has been done already on getting free and reduced school lunch um, yes. with the basic message that, that babies need calories. And what we're doing is following on that work and saying the quality of the calories really matter. And for those of you who care about, um, you know, the environmental impact of food or other social impacts of food, this is really enabling us to shift millions billions of dollars yes. in government funding away from foods that are potentially not only harmful for the kids, but also harmful, harmful for the environment and uh, shift it to more sustainable um, solutions because it turns out what's good for our bodies is also what's good for the environment, for other, um, other creatures. Yes. The scale, like the potential scale of this, just for some context, I know most people are not deep in the weeds of reading the USDA or uh, School Nutrition Association newsletters, 
but there are 30 million school lunches served every single day in the United States. And um, a lot of policies have been focused around food security for those 30 million meals. Let's get any food to kids who need it. Great start. We are, at a posi- we are in a position now, and it's not just a, a position socially. This is a position in terms of the epidemic of diet-related disease. We are in a, like, the moment that we're in is so urgent to shift to nutrition security, to take it from any food is enough to no good food matters, the quality of food matters, the health of our children and families matter. And uh, yeah, this, this policy work in Massachusetts has been one of the most exciting parts of balanced expansion in the past uh, couple of years. So if folks want to get involved, how can they, do you want to talk about how they can get involved or oh, do you want me to? So uh, our website is MA school, what is it? Healthy school lunch, MA, healthy school lunch, MA.org. Yeah. Um, and from there, uh, maybe we should add that into the comments. Oh, I'm not on my, I can do it. I got okay. it. Um, and um, there you can sign up for a newsletter, which will give you updates. We have a hearing date of likely early January. Um, thank you so much for adding that. So definitely sign up there to learn more. I'm, of course, always happy to answer questions. And Audrey, really, Anytime. I'm so blown away by her expertise in this uh, space. She is such an encyclopedia of knowledge and um, Thank you. one of the most organized <laughs> on top of it people I know, um, which makes me really enthusiastic about Balanced as a whole, um, but also really optimistic about um, the prospects for not only the legislation in Massachusetts, but for our opportunity to shift truly billions of dollars um, in procurement uh, over the coming decades. So it's a yeah. huge potential impact here. And absolutely, even if you're not in Massachusetts, feel free to sign up for the newsletter because like Brian, or sorry, Brian, I said, started following you. So I said your name, like Alexis said, uh, this will be, this is just a starting point. And so we'd love to, you know, have everyone as part of the coalition, even if it's just to, to stay up to date on the progress we're making. But yep. yay, thank you, Alexis, for of taking course. the time to chat. Um, yeah, thank you again. And for everything you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Have a good rest of your day. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.